Hey, this is Guy from New Plastic. Today we'll be making this. Basically making things grow using textures only. Pretty simple but effective technique. If you got any questions or anything, hit me up on Instagram at ochang. Comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Happy 2021. It's crazy. Let's go. So square ratio, octane render. Let's set up a quick scene. We're going to use this uh, sphere just to show the example. And I'm just going to set a quick little background. It's going to be a pretty simple scene. Now I'm going to just shape this scene, sculpt it around just to make it look cooler. So you use a hexadron with a hundred segments and we're going to set this to wireframe so we can see and look around without obstructing the camera. Let's just set a quick camera. That looks about right. Now we can move here freely. So I'm going to open the sculpt tools They're over here. I'm going to drag them here. And now I'm just going to just pull them, pull around some polygons to make a slightly more interesting shape. I'm just using the, the several sculpt tools for that. Now let's set a quick lighting. So I'm just using um, this indoor HDRI. Let's just see how it looks. Let's rotate it around. I don't want it to light up the scene too much just to give some ambient uh, fill lighting. And I'm just going to set up a quick light setup. I'm going to use a top light. Turn it down a little bit or a lot. Bring down the temperature to make it a bit warmer. So it kind of complements the, the bluer tones from the HDRI. Now let's just reduce the, both of their opacity. And I'm just going to use this light as like a, a small and strong specular light. And we're just going to copy our top light and use it as this large rim light. And that's pretty much it. Let's just name our lights. And let's light up the background too. So we're going to copy that and just use it to light up the background. Let's group them all together. Let's look at our settings. We got path tracing, 1024 max samples, specular depth pretty high. Everything here is pretty regular. Okay, so I created a few videos of the reaction diffusion pattern kind of happening. As you can see here, I made about five videos that you can download and use, but you can also use uh, a plugin called the Live Tool for After Effects. Some genius guy made to basically create these diffusion patterns. And I just played around with it and created all these different ones for you to download. So each folder is going to have a sequence of JPEGs and an MP4 of the video. And you're going to be able to download it in the link that I'll provide. So let's texture our scene real quick. Uh, I'm just using this color, no specular for the background. And for the main model, we're going to use two different materials. One of them is just a subsurface scattered kind of rubbery type material. Pretty simple. You just use two nodes, some roughness. Use this pink color in the transmission node and into the albedo of the scatter with 100 density and one centimeter radius. And the other material is this gold material that I have. I, I always use it all the time. I'm using RGB IOR workflow to get the metallic look. To, uh, it's the most realistic way to get metals in Octane. Leave a comment if you want me to do a tutorial about that. That's really the most realistic way to get a metallic look in Octane at least. And I have some imperfection maps on the roughness and the bump. And yeah, it's pretty simple. Let's just see how it looks with Beckman. Now, Octane is fine for us for this, uh, for this tutorial. So we're going to use the diffusion reaction, reaction diffusion pa um, pattern to mix two these two textures. So I just created a mixed material and I'm dragging both materials into the slots. And then I open the image texture and I'll select one of the JPEGs. I'll select the first JPEGs of the video that I want. 
Then I'm gonna hit calculate, change it to 30 frames per second, even though it doesn't really matter. And now if I put the texture on the object and tick animate preview, now you can see that it's working. We're gonna have to set the movie set start frame to one so that it'll start on the first frame. But now you can see that it's working. It's just slowly spreading as the pattern grows bigger and bigger. Let's just set the texture projection projection to box and you can play around with the texture projection and with the transform to get the look that you want. It depends on your model and all that. It's always better to use the UVs, but if you don't have UVs or they're not good, you can just set the texture projection. And this is not procedural. I mean, obviously it would be cool if it was procedural, but it's still getting the effect. Now, the, the image gets cut because of the UVs, so let's test out other projections. I think XYZ to UVW would probably be the best. And yeah, that looks pretty perfect. It's pretty perfect. Let's just fix up our lighting. With these organic and curvy models, I really want to just emphasize the curviness of the model. So I'm going to increase. Now you see that long specular that follows the curve. Let's compress our highlights and increase the exposure. Nice. Now, yeah, I want it to be the opposite. I want it to be a gold material that has the red material spread over. So I'm just going to invert the image. And that's pretty much it. Just fixing up our lights. So the coolest thing about this is that we can use the same map as a displacement map. And since we used uh, the projection type XYZ to UVW, we would need to use vertex displacement and not texture displacement. Now let's just drag it into the displacement node. And as you can see, it doesn't really do much and we're going to have to increase the subdivision level. But you want to be careful with it because it might start crashing and get unstable on higher subdivision levels. So use the very minimum amount that you need. And if we zoom in, you can see that it starts to poke out a bit better. So let's increase it even more. I accidentally turned the height to zero, so let's turn it to 2.5 actually. Yeah, look at that. So cool. And what happened? I accidentally made the displacement height super huge. Let's bring it back to 2.5. And that's pretty much it. Um, that's really all it takes and you can use any object and any material for that and just mix the materials using those videos, those JPEG sequences because that's what Octane can uh, interpret. And I'll show you a different um, object. So I just scaled up the whole scene, scaled down the whole scene to fit this size of the head. And this is just a head you can download for free from 3D Scan Store. Um, I was using it to practice um, skin textures and we can go over the skin texture. I, the last few weeks, I really figured a bunch of stuff about skin textures, but as you can see, we can use that and use the exact same technique to make it grow on the head and use the realistic skin texture that I made to mix it with this, uh, with another material, whatever material I want. So let's just look at the material that I made for this one. You see, this is my skin material setup. It's using a mix of two different materials, scattered and glossy. And I'm attaching that to a mix material to mix with that red other material. And I'm using the exact same technique. I'm dragging the image texture to the displacement and to the mix. And because now I'm using the UV map, I can use texture displacement type instead of vertex, but gotta make sure 
the level of detail is, is high enough and that you're dragging it through a baking texture, which also has a resolution of your image and that they match. The texture displacement type is the old algorithm that Octane used, but it breaks more easily even though it's faster. Uh, vertex displacement type is a newer algorithm and it doesn't require the baking texture node. It can easily be used with different uh, projections like uh, UV projections and it doesn't break really. Uh, but it's way slower and it crashes more easily. So it's up to you. And here I, uh, I'm just scaling down all the settings for the blob model since uh, we scaled down the scene. And I tried to address this issue where the displacement got transparent for some reason. I didn't know, but I played with it until it got kind of fixed. And look how cool it looks from up close. It looks so sick. Yeah, perfect. So for the render settings, we'll just use EXR Octane, Tone Map because we compress the highlights, shadows, SSS, Beauty, Denoise, Beauty, uh, Reflections, Normal Map, Ambient Occlusion, and that's kind of the standard uh, stuff. That's it. Looks incredible. Let's change up the, the, the Diffusion Map for a different one. And now we need to not invert it, as you saw. But now also you see the displacement is inverted, which is another really cool look. Now it looks like his skin is being, I don't know, exposed or something. And he's kind of getting scratched on his skin. And you see the flesh under the skin. That's even, that's actually even a cooler look. I might just go with this one. Yeah, look at that. It just looks like a fleshy thing. And yeah, I mean, obviously you can invert the displacement to make it pop out, but I just think I'm going to go with the pop in, in look. So now I'm just going to set up a really quick camera animation. I turned off the displacement just so I can move around the scene more easily and the displacement won't kind of bog down the scene. Um, I used a stage object to cut between two cameras. Uh, I didn't want to waste any time explaining this tool, but you can, you can Google it. I pretty much drag the cameras I want to use into the stage object and I keyframe each camera at the frame that I want that camera to kick in. And I'm adding a little bit of noise to the red texture just to get a little more texture. It was way too smooth. And now I think we're pretty much done. And this is how it ended up looking. I think this is a really simple but powerful technique. It looks complex, but it's pretty, pretty easy. You can use obviously any type of black and white animation to achieve that that growing effect. But I think that reaction diffusion one has this cool like chemistry, organic, but almost techy look. You can achieve that on your own with coding or if you used a live tool for After Effects, but you can also just use these videos and go crazy. Um, yeah, I just wanted to say that I really appreciate all the support and the appreciation that you're sending my way yeah i mean i i just started this just because i thought it would be fun but yeah all the reaction is uh is really making me realize we can we can we can build something great here so yeah 2021 we're gonna go crazy hit me up on instagram at ojang comment on the video subscribe to get everything uh lots of new ideas for tutorials and videos uh man it's gonna be so cool so yeah that's it. Have a good day. Peace.